All right, guys. Um, welcome to my talk on um, Zanata translation platforms. <coughs> um, first, bear with me my cough. Uh, I got a bad throat this week, so I'm coughing. Just bear with me. Um, <coughs> so I'll do a brief introduction of myself. Um, I'm working with uh, Red Hat at the moment uh, from the globalization tooling team. I'm a soft senior software engineer. I've been joining Red Hat for um, five years this year and been working on this project ever since. Um, and our team consists of four full-time software engineers. <coughs> so let us begin. Um, so these are the topics I'll be going through today. What is Zanata? The workflow, obviously, uh, translate in Zanata, and what's coming up in 4.0 release. Um, so if you've got any questions in the, during the presentation, just um, let me know or interrupt me anytime. So what is Zanata? <coughs> so Zanata is a translation platform um, that used by various community um, projects. It was started as a um, tooling to help internal Red Hat translators to help with their workflows and uh, translation processes. Um, but then it evolved and uh, get into the community of open source. Um, we are currently used by um, internal Red Hat translators, um, OpenStack community, and also Fedora. And uh, as far as I know, there's a couple of uh, private companies that's actually using or deploy their own Zanata instance um, using them by themselves. Um, so Zanata starts off in 2008, um, and the main focus is how we can help the maintainers and the translators um, with their workflows in, in order to get their projects translated. Um, <coughs> two of the main components uh, that is, I think, um, <coughs> important, which is the server side and the client side. Um, it is written in Java uh, and JavaScript for the front end and running on MySQL databases. <coughs> and for Fedora, um, we're actually migrating, migrate all the Fedora packages in 2014. Uh, it is fully migrated now in fedora.zanata.org. So the server side, um, so basically that's the back end of the whole Zanata. It's the brain of the Zanata. Um, it hosted in JBoss EAP uh, in internal Red Hat, handles uh, user interactions um, with the REST APIs and uh, through the interface interactions, persists data in the database, <coughs> and um, the line there, process of migrating React.js from front-end, uh, that's basically, if you have noticed, our front-end is actually using JSF at the moment. It's been obsolete, the technology, so we are currently migrating to React.js to handle the, um, the front-end itself. So there's a couple of instances that Zanata has um, for the open source community. Fedora.zanata.org is the one dedicated for all the Fedora packages. We've got translate.zanata.org, which is for the open source project, so anyone can host there if they register themselves. Um, we also got jboss.translate, jboss.zanata.org, which is for jboss project itself. And we got one more instances in Zanata internal, and also OpenStack has their own instances, which is uh, OpenStack, translate.openstack.org. So all the four instances, Fedora, translate.zanata.org, JBoss and internal Red Hat is um, managed by the Zanata team, whereas the OpenStack ones, their ops team is actually handling it. <coughs> For the client side, um, it's a command line tools that I think mainly used by the maintainers. Um, it handles the command line interactions with Zanata server, so you do a push pull, um, getting some interactions or getting some data from the server itself. And push and pull source and translation files, obviously. Um, so previously, I think um, in two years ago, we have a Python client for Zanata itself. Um, the problem with that was uh, we're having problems maintaining it in terms of keeping up with the technologies, and um, there's no expertise of, in terms of Python uh, programmers in the team. So currently, it's maintained by community, so it's not that up-to-date compared to the other client that we have. We have Java client, which is currently maintained by the Zanata team. Uh, it has gone through a couple of uh, migration before. Currently, we are using a framework called Zero Install. 
So what it does, it, it helps the client to be packaged to multiple platforms. So it supports in Mac OS, Linux, and Windows. That's the main problem that we had previously with the Python client, where um, the users need to install different packages in different platforms itself. With zero install, uh, basically it supports multiple platforms. So all you need to do is just install zero install for either of the platforms or operating systems. Then zero install would handle the uh, Zanata client through downloading some feed from the Zanata server itself. <coughs> so we're talking about workflow. Um, so workflow in Zanata as in general, um, pushing operations mainly on pushing source files. So to me, uh, the operation is mainly done by the maintainer itself. It's about pushing the resources that has been ready to Zanata and make it available to all the translators um, in, uh, in, in Zanata to be able to start translating. <coughs> There's two ways of pushing source files, using browser and using client. For using browser, um, obviously it's not recommended. The reason I put it there because it's kind of like a one-off uh, operations where <coughs> if you got an urgence to, to, to push a single file without going through configure the configurations for the project itself, then using browser is the, is the best way to go. So all you need to do is to log in and you know, go through the links and you can um, push it up straight away or upload it if you call it. And um, the benefits of that is there's no extra installation, which is there's another client needed. So you can basically a browser, log in and done. For the client itself, uh, it's more recommended because Basically, with uh, the project hosted in Zanata, there's a configuration file attached to it, which is called Zanata.xml. And in that file, there's a lot of um, configurations of the directory's name, the, download, the downloaded files, uh, the naming convention, and everything is being set up by the maintainer. So it's more recommended to use the client um, to actually push the source file because it's actually reading the Zanata.xml configurations and push it to the correct uh, directories or the file name itself. So <coughs> using client is more appropriate and it can be automated because you can set up a cron job basically to, to run the command line itself. <coughs> For pooling translations, um, so it can be done by maintainers or the translators. Um, for the maintainer, obviously they do it when the translation is finished or completed and ready to be packaged and um, sing it to the uh, repository. For the translators, I would imagine uh, it's mainly for previewing their work after the translation has been done. And uh, I think it can mainly be done by the um, QA as well to build up the test instances or um, the documents and uh, have a preview or QA on that. Um, again, it can be done by browser and client. Browser is easier. Uh, just click on and download the file straight away. Um, it's the same benefits and uh, same pros and cons as the uh, pushing of source files. So using browser, obviously, it's a quick preview of translated documents, uh, a quick way to QE or to get the resources that's been done in Zanata, um, but it's not recommended for the uh, repeatable uh, operations. Using client, again, it's the same. Uh, it's, it can be automated. It's more controlled because the configuration is there and everything, um, and it's more recommended. It's more stable in a way. <coughs> so this is diagram for, overall diagram for the um, workflow in um, Zanata. So you got the G itself is actually a Git repository. I can't find a better icon for that. <laughs> so sorry. Um, so you got a maintainer or the writer that actually push and pull translations from Zanata. And you got a translator that actually only handles translations in Zanata. So you're going to only translate the strings. And the maintainer actually syncing the, after pulling the translation, syncing it to the repository and built the documentations or the package itself. So overall, this is the, um, well, this is the simplified versions of the operations. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of backend stuff happening when building a document, there's a different process. And also when um, <coughs> building package as well, there's a lot of uh, happening in the backend. <coughs> So translate in Zanata. So in general, um, obviously when I put up the slides, um, I didn't, um, 
obviously I forgot about the processes in, in Fedora where you need to <coughs> forget the pre processes in uh, Fedora where you need to register in the mailing list and uh, introduce yourself <coughs> and the, the processes of a translator to be able to contribute into uh, Fedora translations. So what I put it there is actually the process for, um, for Zanata itself. So from Zanata point of view, um, user just need to have an account in Zanata and you are a member of a language team. So the process would be you register yourself, you get an activation emails for your account, then after that you request to join a language team. So obviously for Fedora's process it's a bit different. Um, as far as I know you need to join a mailing list and um, you need to request for joining a membership in the language team and it's up to the team coordinator to approve it and then you can start to contribute into the uh, Fedora translations. Um, <coughs> so that's the general part for mostly all the projects in Zanata. We also recently introduced a project security, so it's more like a um, more tighter control projects for translations. So for the, in the project setting itself, uh, you can actually set invite only in the security, in the security tabs. So what that means is if it's set, it's only a set of users or translators can actually translate in Zanata rather than all the people that are actually registered in Zanata. So it's more control environment. Um, it's uh, actually focused more for um, like a corporate projects where you don't want anyone to be able to translate in the project itself. You just want to tightly um, secure it and you only trusted a set of people. That's the uh, whole idea for that feature. <coughs> now for Translate, uh, obviously if you guys have been using it, um, there's an editor that you guys go into. Um, it's an interface that is actually written in uh, Java, but it's, we have a framework called GWT that actually converts it into um, JavaScript. And um, it's an interface for translator translate. Um, it supports um, concurrent editing for multiple users. So if multiple users actually in the same entry when editing, you can actually see their name in there and um, try to avoid the uh, conflict uh, translations in an entry. Um, <coughs> now the last point, new improved editor is in progress. Um, if you guys have been seeing it, there's, there's a small icon on the top of the editor saying alpha editor. Um, so that's the uh, new migration that we moved to React.js, which I mentioned earlier. So <coughs> in that new editor, um, we are still working on it. At the moment, it's in alpha state. So we are, try we are slowly migrating all the features that's in the current editor into the new editor itself. So um, keep an eye on that. Um, it also supports, with the new editor, it supports uh, responsive design. So uh, that means if you try to view it in a smaller screen or in a mobile, uh, it will support that. <coughs> um, so in the editor itself, uh, I call it helper, but some people call it different names. <coughs> There's a couple of features in the editor that helps with the translations. Um, so it's a translation memory and glossary at the bottom if you, if you in the existing view, existing view in the editor itself. Um, it acts as a reference for translators during translations. You get to see what has been translated in Zanata in the past and has been approved or saved as translated. <coughs> for glossary, um, at the moment, it's uh, uploaded by admin. So it acts as a kind of a dictionary for the translator itself. So um, glossary is not as uh, updated as translation memory because it's, it's by per upload. So it depends on the admin that uh, actually uploading it. Uh, for translation memory, it can be from any projects in Zanata. So any translation that has been approved or saved, it will instantly show up in your next uh, translation when you actually translating a string it will search for the matching ones and it will display at the bottom there to help you guys to, to translate. Um, <coughs> I'm going pretty fast here. Um, any questions? <laughs> no? All good? <coughs> so um, at the moment uh, in fedora.zanata.org fedora <coughs> the version is 3.9.3 um, 
there's uh, it was 392 as of last week, but this week it's 393. Uh, the reason was there's a there's a bug fix, urgent bug fix on the login in Fedora. <laughs> so yeah, um, it was um, the the main problem was the Unicode itself. Where if you've got a Unicode in in Fedora uh, on your full name or in your name, uh, it would create problems. So it's it's a it's a problem in in Zanala itself. <coughs> but um, so. The next one we expect to come out is 4.0. Um, that would be in three months' time. So we just released 393. So three months' time, we try to release it every three months, and every six months, there's a major release. So in next three months, uh, hopefully, we can see 4.0 up. Um, <coughs> so the features that we have in 4.0, there's a couple of changes in the UI itself and some extra features in the front end. Um, Docker image for developers and quick start. So um, from what the feedback that we got from um, some of the contributors to Zenata, uh, it's very hard to set up Zenata in their, in their machines. So we have provided a Docker image where you can start up or spin up a, a container and start up straight away easily. And uh, you can pretty much start coding itself if you want to. <coughs> um, the first release of Zenata Sync. <coughs> so Zenata Sync is a um, site projects that we do around Zenata. The focus was, the idea was to help out with the, um, the workflow that we have. I don't recall if you look at the workflow just now. <coughs> so if you look at the push and pull translations and sync to repository, at the moment it's done by the maintainer manually or he can set up a cron jobs. Um, so that Zenata sync project is to automate that three processes. So basically it's a uh, scheduling system where a maintainer goes in there, set up some, uh, put in some settings, uh, point it to the project's URL or project settings. <coughs> then in the, um, in the time or in the schedule that he set up, it would actually push sources from the repository to Zenata and pull translations, sync it back to the repository. So it depends on the configurations. So he can set up every hourly or daily, stuff like that. Um, that would done so it will automate the whole process. So it would eliminate the need for uh, installing Zenata client on your local machines, uh, worrying about oh, the source is not updated in Zenata, translator, translator is not getting the, the latest source string in Zenata, the translating is a, the, the effort for translate all the old string is, is wasted. So that Zenata sync project would automate all that process. <coughs> and um, and it supports um, only the, the same login as Zenata. So you don't need to register a new account. So use the existing account, although it's a separate service. Um, but it uses the same login as what you had now in Zenata. So it's a tool that look what is going on in Zenata platform and look what is going on on source repository and make and uh, asking to and <coughs> making some automatic synchronization yes. Yes. on one side and <coughs> both sides. Side. And will we have uh, a log to, to know um, what's happening, you know? Just at the to moment, keep track what happened on this yeah, server. so at the moment we don't have that yet, but that's because it's a new project. So we try to take it step by step. So we're trying to do the first release. Okay. Then we will provide, um, I, know, I don't know if you guys used Jenkins before, but there's a lot of good features in there where you can see the logs, the history, and all, all the job status. Mm -hmm. So we try to have that then as well. Um, obviously, it's going to take time, but the, the main focus right now is to have it working with the basic syncing. So to automate that three processes first, then we can add in more features in the future. Um, the, the idea was allow maintainer to, to have an easy life. They don't, they don't need to worry about, oh, I, need to push, uh, I forgot to push the source string when it's updated to Zenata, uh, or pulling the latest translation from Zenata. That's, that's the worry that you don't need to worry about anymore. He just set up, then he would done it automatically in the back end. Um, now the next one is uh, project-based glossary. <coughs> At the moment, the glossary itself it's it's global, meaning that it's um, it applies to all the projects in Zenata. Um, one of the feedback that we got was um, some of the projects prefer to have their own context, and that's a lot of problem for the translators because different projects, same word has different context, and translating it would be a lot difficult. So. Um, 
what the request was, we need a project glossary. Uh, again, this was based, the, the idea was coming from the external parties where they want to have a more controlled environment and therefore they, they want to have their own glossary to be used or referenced by the translators. So meaning that that word should be translated in that way or it shouldn't be translated. So that's why the project glossary uh, is introduced. So it will be in 4.0 and, um, <coughs> and also the existing glossary, um, the feature will be improved. Uh, I'll show it to you guys later on some of the previews for 4.0. <clears throat> but we have improved the, um, the existing glossary where if you're assigned to a role, uh, you can actually edit glossary itself in Zanata now. So unlike previously, you need to um, do it outside Zanata, push it to Zanata by admin, uh, but now you can actually edit it in Zanata, um, but it doesn't keep the history as it doesn't before. So <coughs> just be careful when you're editing glossary. <coughs> Is there a plan to actually bring back this expression? Or Sorry? Is there a plan to actually bring back the, the history? Yeah. Um, there are talks on that. We, we're still evaluating on, on whether it's, it's worth the effort of, of doing that or not. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's a glossary, it's a dictionary, right? It's, it's not like a translation memory where we need to keep track of the, the, the contributors, the, the contributions for, for individuals or, um, or the history of the translation where, where it goes bad and stuff like that. It's, it's just a glossary, it's just a dictionary. So we're still evaluating on whether we, we want to put in the effort of, of having that or not, because that would hugely, um, that would increase hugely on the um, database sizes, obviously. Um, having a completely run of source, but have you considered storing that in the history Yes, so there, there are a couple of, uh, we are, Actually, we are having a side project of how we improve the, the storage. We have been looking on document-based database. Um, I'm thinking more something like uh, keep the, the, the current version uh, on the database as you are doing now, yep. and keep the history in the history. <coughs> if someone wants to consume the history, they can just access it. Yeah, right. yeah. So we, we have explored some of the options. So there, there are a couple of ways. Um, so when, when doing that, obviously, the, the main thing that we want to migrate is the current translation memory. It's a huge data and database at the moment running on MySQL. So, so if, if we were to migrate to a different database, um, then translation memory is the first one that we're gonna migrate first because it would improve hugely on the performance. Then we were looking at the glossary move there as well. So it's gonna be step by step. <coughs> um, the last point is integration with Fedora. <coughs> um, so for the recent few months, we've been concentrating on integrating with um, the systems, um, so a couple of systems. So from Fedora point of view, we are trying to integrate with the Fedora batch and the uh, um, Fedora hubs. <coughs> um, as um, mentioned earlier this morning, um, Fedora hubs is the upcoming project for Fedora where it tracks all the um, activities of the, um, in, in the Fedora community. So one, one of the requests, one, one of the early experiments they want to do or prototypes is to have Zanata feed information about the translation activities into their systems. Um, so previously, we, we already done some of the um, implementation on that. This one is just an improve on the previous uh, versions. So um, there will be extra information um, feed on um, the fat messages. And obviously, um, the badges itself, well, it's, it's the same webhook that, uh, well, we call it webhook because it, it actually fires up message to, to a system. So it's the same message that's going to be used by the batch and the Fedora hubs to, to actually have, those, have them consume the message. <coughs> um, in progress, again, it's the editor itself. Uh, it's a big thing because we, we have been trying to push it for over, um, well, not over a year, but almost a year now uh, since it, it comes out. Um, the reason being was uh, there's a lot of changes in the back end where we have um, used the old technologies where it's already obsolete, so we try to migrate to new technologies. So we, it's taken us, take, taken us a lot of time to, to actually migrate that, but uh, we have got to the point where we will start migrating some of the features from the old editor into the new ones. So hopefully it will be ready to be used um, soon. <coughs> and um, new plugins in Zenara Sync. <coughs> so as I mentioned just now, Zanata Sync is a project to automate the process. Um, it's actually designed in a plugin-based systems, 
so you can write as um, as many plugins as you want. So the the idea was not only you can sync to a Git repository, but you can write plugins to SVN repository or CVS repository if someone is using it still, or even to other systems. So its its main purpose is to sync or pull pull source files into into Zenata and get translation file into somewhere else. So that somewhere else would, can be a Git repository or any repository or any system. So as long as the plugin is there, it would be able to do that automate, uh, it would be able to automate that whole process itself. So the idea is to, obviously we, uh, we first start off as Git because that's the most commonly used repository. Um, but in the future, we're probably looking at uh, some of the systems, probably um, some of the, <coughs> Um, Subversion is one of them because some of them is still using that, and one of the systems, uh, Drupal's, which is um, having their own translation management. But we were hoping Zenata can do some sort of um, syncing with them to to actually have the resources available in Drupal's. Um, but that's that's the whole idea. It's the that's the whole idea for the plugin-based system. You can write as many as you want, and as long as it can be. It has a, a REST API that, that supports it. We will be able to sync it with Zenata. <coughs> um, actually, that's the last slide. It's pretty fast. So again, any contribution is welcome in Zenata. Uh, I know there's a lot of Python programmers in, in Fedora, but uh, if you know a bit of Java or you've got any feature requests um, that you want to try out with Java, um, please do. Um, it's easy with the Dockers right now. Um, you can spin it up straight away. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Questions? So what's the requirement of the, for Sonata on the project repo? Like, does Sonata require the like, so DOP file to be generated? Why I can, you know, push so okay, um, so that's that's a question. It involves a couple of process. So if you understand the whole process, it the project needs to start off with internationalizations, right. where you externalize the string. So the most common one is pull and pop files, right? But the recent one you can see in JSON files, or XML files, or XLIF projects, or property files for Java. So there's a couple of formats. So Zenata supports all of them. Well, not all of them, but uh, the majority of them. Um, so if you look at the Zenata XML, or when you create a project in Zenata, it would ask you what project type you are. Then it, when you push it, it would actually scan for a certain extension of the files. So if you set it like you are a Java project, it will scan for dot .property files. If you're scanning for, um, if you set it for XLIF, it would look for XML files. So there are a couple of that. So if I set it up for DOP yes. projects, then it scans for pod files as the source files. Uh -huh. okay. Then so pod I, files is the translation. So can it also work with tools like IMP tool or you know IPS tool, which is used by Node, for example, to generate those things or generate um, At the moment, Zenata doesn't support it, but. Um, if you look, if you set up your projects, as in, I believe if it's a Python project, you can set up easily uh, to externalize the string or internationalize it, as you said. So, um, I believe, well, I'm not entirely sure, but most of the programmers, if, if you actually develop a package, you would have a fair bit of idea what you should do to, to have your package prepared to be um, translated. So, to have that files ready. So, that's why, um, that there's a lot of confusion where, <coughs> where a programmer write a program, it's not internationalized, and please translate my package. It's, it's not work. It doesn't work that way. Um, but um, having said that, in, in 4.0, we are trying to centralize everything. So you no longer, in the, the idea was you no longer have to select the project type. You just create a project, then Zenata itself would be. Um, smart enough to figure out what type of project is that. So that's, that's the whole idea. <coughs> we are still working on that, so um, hopefully um, you'll see it very soon. Um, 
Now with, with the new endpoint, it actually supports uh, ODT files as well. So the, all the open office or uh, LibreOffice file formats. So the slides, um, the LibreOffice writers format, so ODT, ODP, HTML, um, even dot uh, SRT, which is, which is uh, subtitle files, if I'm not mistaken, for, for videos. So it, it's also supported by, by Zanana. Um, the upcoming one is JSON files. So it's, it's largely used now by um, a lot of the um, Node projects, JavaScript projects. So we've been trying to support that as well. Um, so that's the whole idea for, <coughs> for, for, for the file projects uh, type. Can we add that? Yeah. I <coughs> there's multiple types of uh, files, and then I have a project with Markdown uh, content, yep. and then uh, with uh, uh, get text content. Yep. Can I can I update both in the same project? So at at the moment, if you are doing it uh, through browser, yes, you can. But if you're using it, if you try to upload it using client, uh, then no, it, it doesn't support it because in client we we have some uh, rules where. It only scans for one specific file type. <coughs> but if you're using browser, you can actually upload multiple file types, ODT, ODP, multiple file types in a single project. Mm -hmm. So and if I want to do it with the, the command line, I should uh, create different type of document or different. It should project? be a different type projects because different obviously, type of projects. yeah, yeah. So the the idea was well to give you a bit of background. The the client was created on uh, Pot and Pro get get text format as the first format. So the intelligence or the rules that we put in there is to have only one single type. But as the project grows and more and more different types of projects, there's a lot of requirements too coming up saying that, oh, we want to support multiple file type in, in a single project. Um, for instance, there's a markdown with uh, dot properties actually request from internal Red Hat. So, <coughs> so at the moment, yes, we are using browser to actually upload all those files into Zanata. But uh, hopefully we can uh, improve the client to, to support that in the future. Um, with the file project type that I mentioned earlier, uh, the, the new improved um, project type, <coughs> uh, the client does support it. <coughs> we are still working on it, but uh, if you use file project type, which is, uh, so you don't need to specify any projects that you want, you just need to put what extension you want to include during the scanning process. Uh, it would actually support it. So it's, I believe, it's in 4.0. So hopefully we can see that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's there to support multiple file type. Uh, just before I put our uh, contribution, um, uh, if someone wants to contribute to uh, um, translating, yep. uh, uh, Needs an and needs to be invited, but how that, that how it how it works uh, exactly? Um, in invited as in the the project's yes. security checks. Yeah. Yeah. So <coughs> again, that <coughs> sorry, the security the extra security check it's it's up for it's a decision from the maintainer it's from the package maintainer right? So if there is a package maintainer that say okay I only trusted this set of people. I only want this set of people to translate my projects, so be it. Um, so obviously, he's, obviously the, the project would be limited to that set of people for, for the, all the translated, translation effort, right? Um, but if you set it that way, that means the, all the um, translator that has been approved by Fedora that goes in and translate will not be able to translate your projects. So what the project maintainer does is actually limiting the um, the, the possible translation that he can have from all the contributors in the project itself. But it's up to him because it's his decision to, to actually say that I only trusted this set of people. Yeah, we, we value that opinion. No, but my question was like, um, let's say I want to contribute uh, a translation or I want to contribute uh, in docs. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the steps I have to follow? Why I, ha why I have to ah, do okay. to, uh, <coughs> um, to, to... To be honest, I, I don't have the exact answer. I believe <laughs> Noriko has, which is there. Ah. Uh, so I believe that that's a wi wiki page that has yes, all the steps. Um, yes, but uh, <coughs> it's, 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 it's
it, uh, uh, in the case of dogs, it ends in uh, send a name to the to the mailing list. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually did, and I'm not there. I mean, I'm not. A, a, I'm not approved in the team. Okay, so it's so it's actually the coordinators that's uh, that's not approving that then. So you should you should contact the coordinators, or I can I can look it up for you. I can approve it <laughs> if you want. Okay. Um, so uh, as I mentioned earlier, the the four instances that I mentioned, the Fedora Zanata or Translate Zanata or JBoss, and the internal ones are handled. It's all managed by the Zanata team, right? Um, so the Zanata team is an admin in all the four instances. But having said that, for the Fedora instance, it's a bit different. We, we don't interfere with the, the requests for the Fedora instance. It's all done by Noriko and uh, one of the guys. Beautiful. Yes. <coughs> so Noriko and <coughs> Peter will, is, is actually handling the, the administration for fedora.zanata.org. Um, we only we, well, the Zanata team only interfere if there's, an, if there's a bug that we need to go in or we need to debug the systems. So for Fedora instance, it's a bit different. Uh, so if you've got any problems with uh, approving your, your language team, approved by your language team, or you have problems with um, logging in or stuff like that, uh, you should contact Noriko. She should be able to help you to, to actually push the coordinator to approve it for you. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes. Can you show me the feature I required that's looking at how much each person has translated? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll demo some of the stuff in here. Uh, let me compare it. <coughs> Sorry. Just need to see it that way. So this is the um, this is just a quick preview of what 4.0 will look like. Um, so this is running on my local instance. So I need to find my link. Actually, I should show you. Let, let me show the personal statistics first in the uh, in the current versions. So, as soon as you log in, sorry. If you're not logged in, you'll be able to see the profile, but not the statistics. Yeah. <coughs> so, if you do a search here, let's say Noriko. So you can see the statistic here, and you can select the time frame. Okay. And we actually got an API APIs to, to, to have that's that. That's pretty new. Sorry? That's pretty new. That was in um, 3.8, if I'm not mistaken. So one, yeah. Sorry? Oh, it's a bit sensitive now, so. <laughs> It's actually being busy in terms of <laughs> after the strike phase. Yeah. So for Noriko, it's a bit different, right? She, she's not a full time translator anymore. She's mm -hmm. managing the team, so she's not doing any translations. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> so I'm not to make her look so bad, so uh, <laughs> let's not continue on that. <laughs> but. But yeah, that's that's basically the page to see the statistics. Yes. Uh, the statistic oh. page. Yep. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's it works well, but it's well hidden in the interface. Uh, in four point zero, <coughs> it will be uh, more easily accessible. Like for example, when you are in the in the, in the project page, <coughs> you can have document view, and you know uh, who was the last editor. And there's a name, but there's no link to that yes. page. Will, will, it, will, will it be some improvement? Like yes. If I click on Japanese, because she's, <coughs> she's not, uh, whatever she's Japanese or not, mm -hmm. uh, Japanese means here that she's part of the Japanese team. Mm -hmm. And if I click on Japanese team, will it be possible to have this 
to have an idea of the activity of the Japanese team? The whole team? Yes, the whole team. Because it's, it's possible. Um, to be honest, Zanata have a lot of information of this. We, we keep yeah. every, every data on every translation that um, all the individuals has been made in, uh, have been, has, has made, right? So there's, there's a lot of valuable data in there. It's just how we actually present them in Zanata. What, what sort of information that we need to show in Zanata. So um, we are currently working to improve our project page, uh, project slash version page. Um, at the moment, it is separated two page, right? So you've got a project page with a list of versions. Mm -hmm. Then in the version page, you've got the document list or the language list and the documents. So we try to change, we try to combine all this into one single page where you can actually only see, well, it's only highlight the language that you actually join in. So you don't need to go through all the languages, click on that and select the documents to translate. So it's, it's going to straight off with your languages that, that you have you had joined. Then um, it will have some useful information. Uh, by useful information, I would <coughs> mean the recent activities for these projects or, or for these versions. And that's something that would uh, interest most of the translators uh, to have a easy access. Well. To, to, to make them easy access to the, to the recent updated projects, uh, documents in the project itself. So we are currently working on the prototype for that page. So hopefully it would um, save a lot of problems where the, um, so one, one of the complaints that we got from the translator was they need to go through the list of the languages and some of them, if it, is, if it start with Z, then <laughs> obviously you need to scroll down at the bottom and slide on that and stuff like that. So yeah, that, that would, um, actually solve all those problems for, for the in individuals. <coughs> is there any way to compare also versions? Or not, not at the moment, but... Um, well, it would be nice to have, I suppose, but patches, it's a, it's a kind of patches thing. People are starting to compare it to each other. Yeah. As I, as I did a <coughs> short command translation, it was like, I said to them, look at the Vietnamese, they have 8.9%, mm -hmm. and they really did translate until they reach nine percent. Mm -hmm. I said they had more as the Vietnamese. Yeah. So it's, uh, people like to compare with our compete with others. Well, ge generally, I, I would say, well, it's my personal opinion. I would say we, we tried not to create a competitive environment in, yes. in, in in the package itself. But it it's a different opinion, right? Some yeah. some people loves it because it can improve uh, the performance in different teams. So. Um, it's it's a, it's a good idea, I would say. Um, perhaps not so much of comparing between two people, but you can select a set of people to show it in the screen. Yes, I agree. Rather than comparing, you could actually start to do the gamification, and the idea of budget here is okay. Yes, so agree. Yeah. You're not comparing people, but you're rewarding for work done. Yes, yes. And get a better, and again, people can compare the budget, but that doesn't actually affect the budget, but does not necessarily affect yeah, so it, it comes down to the whole idea of integrating with uh, the Fedora badges system. So that feed itself would actually uh, send a message to Fedora messages, the, the Fed message, and they will consume it, and there will be um, implement, implementation on that side to, to, to actually yeah, award. Yeah, but I would find it useful also if uh, some other uh, sends something to trust. Because currently we have this situation, we have another front server who has a Sanada account, so they have a FAS account, CLA, but no other group membership. Right now it means for them they not even can hit the wiki as Patrick uh, did, do uh, it not allowed because of the lot of spam. So mm -hmm. for them it can, can create a, a problem and they cannot work because of that. So there is a question of uh, which open ID, which do you use an ID, do you use a FAS account still, or are these local accounts? FAS, 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 FAS open ID. There is, there is at one point that, in the same way that Spammer got into Fedora hosting and track, that you may get to a point where you need to require people to be CLA for some on Zanata mm -hmm. to prevent Spammers from actually <coughs> trying to do the no, work. But you can you <coughs> avoid that. It's amount of translated which is uh, reviewed and if you have enough reviews you get automatically in. And, and it should be not like the people should go for Sanata and then come to Fedora. 
they first come to Fedora, yes. and then they go to Fedora. So it, it goes back to the initial process where how to join in, in, in the uh, Fedora translators process, right? So if you look at the wiki page, you should actually start with Fedora first before you join Zanata. So you have everything set up in, in, in Fedora, um, except the CLN and everything, then only you sign up in, in Zanata. Um, that's, that's the whole idea. Because from from Zanata point of view, we we try not to yeah. uh, interfere with the from, login system. From there to support, uh, this this last step uh, giving me another group member for the CLA. Yeah. So I mean, I have some rights only in Fedora if I have more than CLA as a group. Right? Mm -hmm. So I cannot work for the council. I cannot work for Pasco. Uh, well, I can work for Pasco, uh, but that's it, you know. Uh, so. Not everybody feels nice with that. To, yeah, you know? but I, I would say it's it's not something that Zanata can handle because it's an entirely yeah, it's, Fedora it's an system. Yeah, organizational thing of uh, the internet organization and Zanata. So, so yeah. Touching some It is infrastructure, yes. yes. They invited us to know to go to this uh, group yeah. about uh, spam. And uh, invite us to, to, to discuss <coughs> about what can we do for translate now about uh, fast groups. My personal opinion is we have to rebuild it from scratch, yeah. and uh, we have to find uh, a good process because at, at the moment it's, it's a real problem. Uh, Sorry, you mean CBS ten now and. Yes. The the first page mm -hmm. uh, on uh, on uh, Zenata. Yeah. Will uh, will it be possible to to uh, a little bit rewrite it so we we'll make sure the end users the translator if they they arrive <coughs> with by Zenata they say okay you are there you are on the federal translation uh, tool mm -hmm. uh, what this is uh, where you can find information. And, uh, so yes, the we. User is less lost. Yes. And, uh, if the definitely. If the user arrives uh, at the connection page, page, it doesn't have an access, and so he also have this uh, link. Yes, so we we can. We can for the the we take the page for <coughs> the zero release mm -hmm. to improve the the communication. Yes. Uh, towards. Uh, the the front page it's it can be easily. <coughs> added by, by the admin, it is okay. customizable in every instances. Okay. So if you look at the OpenStack one, they have different front end because okay. admin put in the information. Okay. So at the moment, I believe, yeah, again, it's the um, Noriko that handles that. So if you need some information that's in the, in the front page, okay. please do contact um, Noriko or myself. Any information you want to add, <coughs> just let me know so that okay. I can... Yeah. Yes. So I'm trying to. Yes. Yes. Um, you need to have an account in Zanata. That's it. Can you show the API? <coughs> well, I don't have it ready right here, um, but. Uh, I'll show it to you or I'll point it to you later on, on the link. Um, so the API actually allows you to extract the list of contributors over a period of time. So you can get the username, then you can fire up a second request to get their contributions over a period of one year. So whichever one year that you are, 365 days. So from there you can get all the information about how much that person actually contributed during that time. And in the same as that Yes, yes. So I have, I'm having problem connecting to internet right now, but um, it's time. Okay. Um, yeah, that's it then. Any any last questions? So I think we we have a workshop coming tomorrow. So you can join us and we have we can have more discussions. Yeah. Yep. So we will, we will uh, 
Identify the features, we'll prioritize those, and then we'll plan everything. Yes. So please do join the workshop. If you have any more questions, then we can discuss that there. Thanks, brother. Thanks. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you.